Welcome back to the Weekly Little Podcast. I'm your host, Owen, and today we'll be going over with the Week 3 games and all the storylines coming out of it, and then going through and predicting the Week 4 games based on the, the spreads that we get from the website but online the one i use to make my online bets all the time not sponsored just love the site just wanted to keep promoting it uh i I don't i didn't go back and check how well i did last week so i might have to start going back and retroactively doing that before right now we're just gonna go back and talk about these games uh starting out with thursday night football panthers at texans panthers win 24 to 9 the texans started davis mills against a panthers defense which is surprisingly good and i i was as i said last week i know this is a bad opponent the panthers have paced faced three bad opponents in the Jets, I believe the Jags, and then the Texans. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Jets, Saints, and Texans. My bad. I forgot they faced the Saints. But uh, even then, the Saints are a hot and cold team that really relies on their defense to come in clutch. So I think that they have had a softer schedule going into this, but I think Matt Rule's doing a great job coaching-wise. And the defense for the um, Panthers really stepped up early in the season, at least. Uh, Davis Mills, you know, Struggled. It's hard to be a rookie quarterback on that limited talent-wise of an offense coming to face one of the hottest defenses in the NFL. Um, so, really, he's going to have to wait a couple weeks to really show what he can do. He's not going to have much of an easier task next week, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, besides the defense, uh, another storyline is Chris McCaffrey's injury. Uh, they did draft Chuba Hubbard for a reason. Chuba Howard for a reason, and uh, I kind of questioned the move when they first did it, but now I understand that you know McCaffrey is now injury prone and he's not very reliable to be in games now so drafting a guy who can carry a, a, a lion share of the load every game like hubbard uh will be it was a good move in hindsight uh this is this is why the panthers are in the way they are they've built a good roster um under this new regime and they've made these steps to take precautions um another player who is doing awesome now is sam darnold imagine you put him from no pro bowlers at all around him to an actual good offense with deep weapons like Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. Uh, Terrence Marshall had a good game. Drew Hubbard out of the backfield. He hopped out. Dan Arnold, tight end, who is now on the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars and trade for CJ Henderson. I know they lost JC Horn in this game, but CJ Henderson, um, personally, I don't think that's big a big of a drop off. JC Horn was playing good. Uh, CJ Henderson will probably come in and play pretty good. And when they get the most guys both in at the same time, that defense is going to have two locked on corners. And I still have Dante Jackson. So uh, their corners are pretty good. Sam Darnold, 223 for 34 for 304 yards. He had two rushing touchdowns, no passing touchdowns. But yeah, he uh, he did really, really well this game. And he's done really well this entire season. He's minimized his mistakes, even though he has some turnover where he plays every game. But he's able to put his team in a position to win games, and that's why the three know. So uh, I'm still on the Sam Darnold bandwagon here. Uh, I haven't jumped off yet, like most people have, because he still has that talent we saw at USC. And now he actually has support around him, uh, and in Carolina with this coaching staff and with the pieces they have around him. Next up, Colts lose 16 25 at the Titans, dropping to 0 and 3. I think the Carson Wentz experiment has been problematic for the Colts. It's not like they're getting prime, healthy Wentz right now, and it's not like they even even have that many good skill positions to sign them with. They have a good run game. They're like diet Tennessee with their run game and how they want to play offensively. Uh, I just think that Michael Pittman can't carry the load by himself, and Carson Wentz is banged up, so this game wasn't looking too good for the Colts anyway. I think, all in all, the Colts have a better roster than the Titans and are a better team. But with Wentz being banged up and not being able to play to his ceiling, and with the lack of skill positions, like if they had if they had the Titans skill positions wide receiver wise, with AJ Brown who got hurt in this game and Julio Jones, I think that the Colts would have easily won this game. But you know, King Henry's going to do King Henry things, and the Colts are pretty banged up right now. I just need to get healthy, and then maybe they can still fight for this division. You know, they're pretty far; they're two and a half games out of it now, so. It's gonna be a little tough for them, but I think I think now they're gonna have a. They had a pretty rough start to the schedule, especially with the Rams and now the Titans. So I think they'll be able to turn around once their schedule uh, le- lightens up a little bit. Falcons at Giants. I'm surprised the Falcons were able to pull this one out. Um, this was just two bad teams trying to not be worse than the other. Uh, the Falcons. The, what I don't understand is how they're not. Why they're not using a lot of utilizing Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is coming from 
this, you know, he's like this, like this receiver tight end hybrid in college. And then Arthur Smith had a similar guy with John U. Smith and uh, Tennessee. So I thought he'd fit right into the offense and have at least like 500 yards, a couple touchdowns, something like that. But like he had zero catches in this game. Or no, I'm sorry, two catches for 35 yards. So I think this is his biggest game he's had as a, as an NFL player. Uh, don't quote me on that. I haven't checked the stats in the other games, but he needs to be utilized more. Cordell Patterson is emerging as one of the strangely best producing players on this offense, despite having Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts and Mike Davis and stuff like that. They're relying on him a lot for running and catching the ball. Uh, I didn't really see that. I just The Giants are just a mess. I don't know if it's the coaching staff. They have talent on this roster. This defense has talent. The offensive line is rough, but they have a wide receiver talent. They have running back talent. Daniel Jones isn't terrible. So I, I, I they just need to find some way to put it together. I think it might be the coaching staff, and I think I might have to move off of them. If I had to choose between the coaching staff and the quarterback, I'd probably move off the coaching staff before I moved off Daniel Jones after this season. Next up, Chargers beat the Chiefs at Arrowhead 30-24. Um, the real storyline from this game was the Chiefs just beat themselves. Like there was the Chargers outpassed them, but not did not outrush them. Which usually Chiefs lose to people who can beat them rushing the ball. Uh, this wasn't the case. Mahomes threw interceptions. They had two fumbles, and I think just the mistakes are piling up. They had the mistake against the Ravens where Clyde edwards helaire fumbled the ball, and that's what lost in the game. That game, they're just not playing clean football. And now Andy Reid's gonna be out for at least. He was out for her dehydration, was the report. So I don't know if he's back at practice yet or not. But this team that is already playing sloppy to begin the season is now missing at least a couple of days of practice with their head coach, who might not be spilled full strength until, you know, the game on Sunday. So I don't know what's going on with these guys. They're way too talented to be losing games like this. And this might be able to come this might come back and bite them when it comes to playoff seeding uh, later down the road, because they already have two AFC losses. And they're at one and two, which makes them third in their own division. No, fourth in their own division. They're, the Chiefs are currently fourth in the division behind the Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos, which is insane to think about. But it's only week four. They'll probably rattle off 10 straight wins or some, something stupid like that. But I think this is going to hurt hurt their seeding in the long run because they have those two AFC losses. And they're definitely not going to win the rest of their games. So I think that they'll probably be at best a third seed in the AFC this year. Uh, due to these losses, but we'll see how they rebound. Bengals beat the Steelers. They'll get, so, it used to be that the Steelers always beat the Bengals. And they were always, even though the Steelers play bad against the worst competition, the Steelers could reliably always beat the Bengals. But the Steelers' offense is so bad right now and so Najee Harris dependent that I think the Bengals knew, walked in and were like, okay, we're going to make Big Ben beat us with his arm, and the best Big Ben could do was check it down to Najee Harris. And Najee Harris made him pay for it with yards and touchdowns and stuff like that, especially in the uh, receiving-wise, because like his rushing stats are awful. But I think the Bengals' game plan for that, and for some reason, the Steelers' pass rush just died. I thought they had all these extra guys. I thought it wasn't, I thought it wasn't really very TJ Watt dependent like I understand he's your best player and he's one of the best edge rushers in the league but like I thought with him being out for this week and how weak the Bengals line has played for the first two weeks of the season I thought they would not really lose all the big of a step but Joe Burrow getting sacked I think zero times in this game that is just surprising to me and I'm I the Steelers didn't deserve to win this game the way they played the way their defense played and the Bengals have somehow gotten out the two and one with their only loss being to the Chicago Bears so I think that this is probably one of those teams. I, I don't know how to feel about this because I know the Pittsburgh Steelers like to play down on the opponent. They outgained their opponent. And let's see. Well, the sacks. Yeah, since he had left zero sacks. So I think it was just a case of the Steelers defense not living up to what they were because TJ Watt was out and the offense not picking up that slack, which is not how they're going to win games anyway. So they need to stick to their formula if they want to win it. Justin Fields, in his first start against the Browns, uh, sacked a lot of times. And I just don't think that the Bears are going to be very good this season. Everyone was clamoring for Justin Fields, Justin Fields, Justin Fields. And right now, it looks like if he goes and plays more, he's going to get killed. So I think Matt Nagy is probably the right idea of just sitting him for either Nick Foles or... uh, Wow, what's his name? It's escaping me right now. 
redhead dude from the, from the Bengals, quarterback, Andy Dalton. There we go. I think he was right to say, I'm going to sit him for a year because right now the, he knows that his offensive line and other the other playmakers outside of Allen Robinson on the offense are not up to snuff, and he doesn't want to throw fields out there and ruin him. He ruined his confidence by making him play behind this subpar uh, legion of talent. So I think people are like, Justin Fields, Justin Fields, Justin Fields. I think Matt Nagy may know a little bit more than what most people are saying. And I think that putting Dalton out there, someone who can deal with, who's had to deal with subpar offensive lines and stuff like that in, the, in Cincinnati, as opposed to Justin Fields, who has who's had Ohio State's offensive line and Ohio State's wide receivers. <laughs> Uh, who might need a little time to acclimate to being behind a worse offensive line and stuff like that. I think Dalton may not have the skill set he has, and Fields might be able to give you the bigger plays in Dalton, but I, I don't think it'd be... Well, I mean, the Browns are top AFC contender, but like if this shows anything, this shows that Fields doesn't make your team win any more games than any Dalton would this season. Specifically this season. Not saying the future, not even saying next season, but this season I think Andy Dalton will get you the same amount of wins Justin Fields will get you. Ravens sneak a win with a record-breaking field goal to keep me in my suicide pool against the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are a tough out, and I, they probably can beat the Bears this week. They're not as they're they're not talented, but they play hard for that for Dan Campbell, and that'll keep them in games, especially against the top tier of the AFC or NFC. They'll be in a lot of games. They're not going to get blown out. A lot. There'll be a couple of games, but like I said last week, they're going to be in a lot of games, and they almost beat the Ravens here. And I think they're going to go back, and they're going to beat Chicago next week. So I think the Lions are just really playing hard, fast football. And despite you know, it's like the underdog story where like, the, oh, we're not the biggest, we're not the strongest, we're not the most talented, but we'll go out there, we're going to play, give our 110 percent, give our whole heart, and they win, but in real life, you don't really, really win. You get moral victories by barely losing to a record-breaking field goal. Um, yeah, I'm proud of the Lions, and I think they'll be a big spoiler for a lot of teams uh, coming into next season. So, good looks there. Uh, the Saints destroy the Patriots. Uh, there was a blocked punt and stuff like, and things like that. It was more mostly just a New Orleans defensive game here. I know they scored 28 points, but I think Jameis is still struggling. As a starting quarterback, everyone, you know, jumped to conclusions after that first week one game against Green Bay, but I think the Saints are going to have to rely on their defense to win them a lot of games more this season and then give James chances to make plays with a short field and then also sprinkle a little bit of Taysom Hill. And I don't, I don't know why they ever stopped doing that, but they need to do more of it to, you know, take some pressure off of Winston, if anything. But yeah, Saints defense, underrated. Patriots offense, overrated with Mac Jones. People thought they were going to come in and be, you know, Brady-esque. No. And uh, Patriots defense really needs stuff on Gilmore back, I think. Uh, they just feel like a slightly off than what they should be right now. <laughs> Cardinals-Jags. I had a weird feeling that the Jags might be able to pull this one out, and after the half, it looked kind of looked like it, but they're just so woefully less talented than the Cardinals, and now they got rid of C.J. Henderson on the outside, so... The Cardinals really just showed the divide between the two teams, talent-wise, in this game. And they really just came in there and they took care of business. You know, they got smacked in the mouth in the beginning of the first half, but uh, let up a gigantic kick return touchdown. But I, I think they just needed to come out and they fired and they did. They performed, they executed. They executed what they wanted to do and really put the Jaguars in place, didn't let them score any more points. So uh, the Cardinals' real test is going to be week next week. Uh, we'll get to that again. I don't think the Titans or the Vikings or the Jags are really a test for this team. This is going to be the litmus test for them to see how, how good they actually are and where they're going to be going this season. Washington loses big to the Bills. Um, biggest storyline is something I brought up last week when they faced the Giants. And the Giants are a much worse offense than the Bills. Is what's happening to this Washington defense? This is the thing, the unit, that they're supposed to hang their hat on. They're supposed to win games with this. And like I said last week, Taylor Heineke probably isn't giving the offense a lot more than what Fitzpatrick would give you. Like Fitzpatrick has those weeks where he's like, oh my God, he's Fitz magic. But then other weeks, he's as good as Taylor Heineke was against Spills right here. It's so the offense is going to be the offense. What they have right now is probably close to what they would get on a normal 
week to week basis average if you averaged out Fitzpatrick's really bad weeks and really good weeks you would probably get the offense that Heineke is running right now which outside of one big play wasn't all that great Heineke made some bad decisions but Fitzpatrick makes bad decisions all the time too the Bills defense is finally showing up which it's weird the Bills defense was bad last year Washington was good last year they kind of flipped it was kind of the reverse of both defenses at this point last year in this game this year so I think that Washington needs to really, you know, look at themselves in the mirror and like, what is happening? What is going wrong here? I know their linebacker is a bit of a weakness. Jamin Davis needs to really uh, get incorporated. Get needs to get up to speed with the NFL level, um, play better. And I, I just think Washington is doomed to miss the playoffs. And Dallas might win this division if Washington can't get that defense together, which is what they were supposed to have all good and ready to go before the season even started, but. We'll see if they can fix it. They have good coaches, so I have confidence that they'll be able to fix it and come back and take this division. Jets just need to... They're... That's ridiculous. You'll see later in the week, I'm doing a... For the draft episode of the podcast, I'm doing a mock draft based on Super Bowl eyes. Jets are the number one overall pick for a reason. They just need talent everywhere, especially on the offensive line. On both sides of the line, really. Broncos has had their way with them. It's just... It's kind of sad. I'm just... I have to go. I'm gonna have to go through their, their schedule and try to find them a win, because right now they're playing like the worst team in the NFL again for the second year in a row. Even though the Jags got the first overall pick last year, I think the Jags this season, despite them also being 0 three, are not nearly as bad as the Jets have been this season. Which is kind of weird because I thought Robert Saleh would come in and give them like a Detroit Lions with Dan Campbell kind of vibe, where they're gonna be a tough out because they're gonna play tough and play good, solid, smart football. But as of right now, no, no, they're not. Dolphins losing in overtime to the Raiders with a backup quarterback, which is why I keep saying to slowly roll on the Raiders. They beat the Ravens when they were super banged up week one. They were reeling from all the injuries they had. So you beat them when they were off their game. They are, they are the boogeyman for the Steelers, and the Steelers obviously haven't been as good as advertised, even though they beat the Bills. Yeah, haha. They just lost the Bengals by 14. Uh, I, and the Raiders beat Jacoby Brissett. By three in overtime because they didn't call an off they didn't call an offense or a defensive pass interference. So Raiders three zero. They've beaten two playoff teams from last season, but I would pump the brakes on it. They're kind of a, a, a what's it called like a faker. I, I don't see them as like a top tier AFC team. Maybe like a seventh seed at best. Right now they just drew the good cards of who to play at the right times in the year. Uh, Ravens banged up. Steelers, they'd always beat them. And Miami Dolphins, without their starting quarterback. Uh, I just And they almost lost. They almost lost to a backup quarterback in the Miami Dolphins. So I, I would pump the brakes on the Raiders hype train right now. Seahawks versus Vikings. This one surprised me. I'm not the biggest Vikings fan. I think they're not as good as they have been in previous seasons. And they need to get everything together to defenses falling off and that's what they used to be like oh we'd have this great defense and then also these awesome weapons and i just they still have good weapons don't get me wrong justin justin jefferson isn't that far off from stefan diggs if not equal to him offensive talent wise but the their defense is doing the doing enough to win games the seahawks just lost this game this was more of a detriment to them. Their defense just let up so much. Three touchdowns, a 323 to Kirk Cousins, 112 to Alexander Madison, which I'm assuming Dalvin Cook was hurt then. Too bad I dropped Alexander Madison to fantasy. That sucks. Anyway, uh, they they just gave up so much to the Vikings offense, and no matter how much Russ can do in that offense, even though some teams have already kind of figured it out, even though they changed offense coordinators, they're still only putting up 17 points on this weekend Vikings defense, this older, not as good as in the prime Vikings defense. And so the Seahawks, this is more of a detrimental detriment to the Seahawks than it was a positive for the Vikings. Vikings came in, beat up on a Seahawks team that's kind of lost right now uh, after losing to the Titans and choking that game away. So the Seahawks need to really look themselves in the mirror and figure out what do we need to do to make this better because they are struggling early in the season, opposed to last season where they started off hot. My preview for the NFC Championship game, Bucks Rams, and like I've been telling everybody, the Rams are built to beat the Bucks. Interior pressure showed up. Strong physical corners on the outside showed up. An offense unlocked by 
not or not limited by Jared Goff anymore and unlocked by Matt Stafford. Shown here. And the Bucks are weak at corner. They're looking at Richard Sherman. The the Rams are strong at wide receiver. It doesn't matter if their running back room is decimated right now. They're able to pass over everybody, including the defending champions, Buccaneers, and their defense that really carried them to a Super Bowl last season. Uh, in the playoffs, anyway. So, I think the Rams are definitely the team to beat the NFC. They've been my Super Bowl champion pick since the end of last season, since the Matt Stafford trade. I think you'd have to change, you have to really show something to me to change my mind, after, especially after they beat the Bucks this week, which I won a lot of money on that. So thank you, Rams. Thank you for proving me right so far. And I hope to God I see Rams, Browns, and Super Bowl because I'm gonna say from three months before even this is recorded at 2:13 a.m. I call it. Packers of 49ers, another game I won a lot of money on because people are sleeping on the Packers because they lost big to the Saints. And people are high on the 49ers because they blew out the Lions, but the Lions came back and they they won against the Eagles. They beat the Eagles team that had just come off a big game against Atlanta. It's Atlanta. Eagles aren't that good, as shown by Monday Football. And the 49ers barely beat the Eagles in a defensive slugfest with a team whose greatest benefit or greatest strength is not their defense in the Eagles. This team's offense is limited. They took the Packers to the distance, but this isn't the same Packers team as we've seen before. I know I just said that people are sleeping on them. They're still not all that great. The 49ers are not all that great. I don't think they're that good. And I know the Packers, I think the Packers are slightly better. And look at that. I was right. They have, they came back, they won. They have the better quarterback. If you can't let, give them that much time left at the end of the game. I just think that these teams are really close level uh, of talent, or like they're in the in tiers of teams or power rankings. However, these two teams are very close to each other, and they're not that far up. Most of them are going to be like 10, 11, and stuff like that. Uh, these teams are like second round loss playoff teams in the NFC right now, and all these people who had the 49ers, oh, minus three favorites against the Packers, I still don't understand it to this day. Again, barely beat a bad Eagles team versus the Packers, who had one rough week one, which is coming out of all this controversy and everything from Aaron Rodgers' uh, drama. And then they come out and win the week two, big against the Lions, which, again, we said is a good team, good coach team. That's tough. And then they meet up and, oh, no, Packers are not as good. So I don't see – they're they're the same team. They're the same team, talent, and or like placement wise on tier list to me that's what i'm trying to get out here and for monday football the last game 21 41 cowboys beat the eagles in jerry world i knew the cowboys would win this game i didn't think it'd be bad this much because i know the eagles are bad i didn't think the cowboys defense would be able to stop jalen hurts the way they did uh the eagles just the uh, jalen hurts struggled and their defense like i said is kind of a suspect uh unit right now when I was talking about the 49ers, they're kind of suspect unit, the defense of the Eagles, and the Cowboys' high-powered offense came out and showed that to them. So it kind of really just confirmed what I thought about the Eagles. And the Cowboys have proved me wrong, wrong a little bit with wins over the uh, Chargers, which they kind of beat themselves. And now the Eagles, which everyone was like, oh, three-point underdogs, three-point underdogs. I knew the Cowboys would be there by more than three. I just wasn't confident because so many people were telling me that they're – the Eagles were this good, or their defense, 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 this, shut down the 49ers. I'm like, I think that was more of a detriment to the 49ers than a positive for the Eagles defense, and this showed me right here. 41 points to the Cowboys. This Cowboys team that, in all reality, isn't really that good. They have to really blow people out. They have to score 41 to win games, and you can only put up 21 on that, and one of those touchdowns was garbage time against this really bad defense, so I'm not all that impressed with what I saw here. So, that's the review of the games from last week. We're going to go through. We're going to switch over to Bet Online, and we're going to go through and pick against the spread for the games this week, which is a lot of them. Um, I already previewed them a little bit. I made my bets and made my parlays already uh, before I recorded this a couple hours ago. And there's a lot of pick 'em games. They're really close. This is a very um, tough week to bet if you don't know, if you're not confident for teams to win straight up. It's kind of like just picking the money lines for these games. Uh, so. Jacksonville is getting seven and a half points against Cincinnati. Um, I'm inclined to take the points because that's a lot of points, but I think the Bengals are just an overall better team, so I'll take Cincinnati minus seven and a half just because I think Burrow and company will be able to score a lot of points against this Jags defense, which is now just lost CJ Henderson, and this Jags offense is not going to be able to score more than 10 to 17. I doubt they'll score more than what the Steelers defense did, even though the Bengals defense isn't that great anyway either. 
Uh, Washington, I'm going to take minus one and a half against the Falcons. It's more of like a pick em with a half a point in there. So I think with the minus one and a half, Washington should win by more than just like a field goal or more. Uh, they'll get back on track against this really, really, really bad Atlanta Falcons defense. They ran into a really good defense for the Buffalo Bills. And Atlanta's offense has, you know, not been all that great. And it should this could be a good tune-up game for that Washington defense that really needs to get back on track um, and get back to playing in the ways they did uh, last season. Give me Detroit two and a half underdogs against the Chicago Bears. I just got done saying how Detroit's going to play teams tough and they're very well coached. And they might, maybe not be the most talented, but they come out and they play hard and they execute and they're not sloppy. As opposed to Chicago, who's all over the place right now, very unorganized offensively, I believe, with the flipping of quarterbacks, unsure who's going to play. The offensive line is in turmoil right now. Allen Robinson's the only good uh, receiving option. So I think the Lions are going to win this one straight up. Don't even need two and a half points, but if you're giving the points, I'll take them. Uh, just a more well-coached team and a team that's playing as one right now, as opposed to a team in the Chicago that's kind of scrambled and looking for an identity and coming off a couple couple big losses. And Detroit's going to be pissed for losing that game, how close they did. So I think they'll come out and really smack them around. And take, I'll take, I'm taking the points, but I, hey, I will take this game even without the points. Give me the Titans minus 7.5 against the Jets. Jets, prove me that you can't, you're can't. you not going to lose by more than two scores. And then I'll start taking you with the points because this is just pathetic at this point. And the Titans aren't even that great. But you're gonna get steamrolled by Derrick Henry. Give Terry if I could bet Derrick Henry 200 plus yard rushing yards this game, I would. Just because the Jets' defense is very, very, very underwhelming. Uh, give me Cleveland minus one and a half against the Vikings. Again, still sleeping on the Vikings. The Vikings ran into a Seahawks team that's kind of in turmoil. Don't really have an identity on defense. Uh, they get run, they got run all over and passed all over last week. Whereas the Vikings normally. They struggled against the Cardinals defense, and they struggled against who was it they played in week two? I can't remember. Crap. Regardless, Vikings, I'm lower on them. Browns, my AFC championship, my AFC championship winner. I personally think that they're going to be run all over the Vikings. The Vikings defense, who played good against a Seahawks offense, which had to become very one-dimensional to make up for their lack of defensive play with the passing wise. Uh, I think that the Viking, the Vikings are going to struggle against the Browns here, against a much better team. So give me the Browns minus one and a half. It's basically pick them again. So um, this one's tough. Colts plus one and a half. Dolphins minus one and a half. I'm inclined to pick the Dolphins because they performed so well with Jacoby Brissett, and two of them might be back. But Brissett performed very well when he asked to step up and take over and had a week full of practice to really rep it in and get get ready to play with the starters out there. So I'm going to take the Dolphins minus one and a half. I just think better coach team. Not really. Okay. That's a lie. Frank Reich is a good coach, but their defense is good and their offense, even though their offensive line is kind of bad, uh, this, the Colts pass rush has been kind of underwhelming. So I think that the Dolphins maybe will go out there and actually throw the ball a little bit, run the ball more effectively than they have in previous uh, weeks. And the defense is going to keep them in this game anyway. So it's going to be close. It's really just who do I think has the ball last that can make a, make a play. Uh, I trust Miami's uh, offense versus the Colts defense and the Colts offense versus the Miami defense with the last kind of uh, drive to really score. <clears throat> Give me Carolina plus five against the Cowboys. Um, Carolina just beat the brakes off of Houston on Thursday Night Football, and they blew out the Saints, and they beat the Jets. So I know they're not. that's not the greatest row. But people are too high on the Cowboys right now after blowing out the Eagles. I think the Panthers plus five. I think their defense is a lot better. Dallas is going to have a hard time moving the ball against that defense as opposed to what they did against the Bucks defense, which is kind of struggling lately. Chargers defense, which they only scored about 20 points in that game. And that's a good defense, but I think the Panthers defense is even better. And this Eagles defense, which, again, garbage. They're not good. I think they won't be able. To, I think they'll be like twenty-four points to be able to score on this uh, Panthers defense, and this Cowboys defense is going to get shredded by Sam Darnold, who shredded an equally bad defense in Houston. Maybe, maybe the Cowboys are a little better, but I think Sam Darnold will be able to come out there, game plan. They got a lot of good weapons. They have uh, hopefully Chuba Hubbard now with a week of rotation as a starting running back will help come out there and have a big coming out party game. But especially the Panthers again, plus five. I'm going to take that all day. I would even think, dare to say, Carolina wins that game outright. But we'll see. 
<clears throat> Giants plus seven and a half against the Saints minus seven and a half. I'm I'm not confident the Giants offense can move the ball against the Saints defense coming off a big win against the Patriots. The Saints offense is going to be just enough, but it has a lot of points. So I'm going to say the Giants with the points, seven and a half. I think they'll keep it within like six or something like that. Two teams that have better defenses than they do offenses, and it should be a low-scoring affair with the Giants keeping it within you know a score maybe. But they won't have any real chance to make up and try to win the game despite it being within that close. So I'll give me the Giants plus with the points, but I don't see them winning this game at all. Uh, give me Chiefs minus 7.5 against the Eagles. The, Ch- the Eagles has let up 41 points and lost by 20 to the Cowboys. The Chiefs, even though their defense has not been that great this season, is still better than the Cowboys' defense. And their offense, if they can minimize the mistakes, is m- not much better, but better than the Cowboys' offense. So, easily going to win by a touchdown. I'd say they win by maybe like 12, 14 over the Eagles. And it's going to be kind of put a lot of questions on Jalen Hurts. Or it's going to be more Patrick Holmes being pissed off that he blew the game for the, them last week. So he's going to come out and really just wreck this Eagles defense, which again, for the last time I'll say it on this podcast, not that great. And it kind of showed it last week. Ooh, this, this, back, this is now down to minus 16 for the Bills. Take that all day. They just whooped the Washington football team, who was a better team than the Houston Texans, let's not forget that, by 22. So I think that the Bills are going to at least cover the 16. Um, it'll probably be a win total. It'll probably be another 20 point uh, win. They're they uh, they have they're tied for best. What is it? Point differential in the league with I think the Denver Broncos. So that's a really good stat for this, and they're going to cover the 16 points against a subpar Houston Texans team who don't. I guess statistic wise, so far this season they have a better defense than Washington, but I think Washington has more skilled players there, and their offense may be slightly better than Houston's, especially with Davis Mills at quarterback. So, uh, give me the 16. Give me minus 16 for the Bills. Here we go. This is probably the game of the week for me. Cardinals Rams. Cardinals are getting plus four and a half. I think I'm going to take the Rams minus four and a half. I just like their defense better than the Cardinals defense, and I like their offense better than the Cardinals offense. I think the Rams' defense is going to be able to contain Kyler, and their weapons are not going to be able to separate from the very good secondary the Rams have, so they're going to have to rely on the run game a lot, which I don't think the Cardinals are built to do that. And the Cardinals are severely lacking in uh, DB depth and DB play, and against a team like the Rams, whose pass attack is top of the NFL around there, they're going to need a lot of good plays in the secondary, which I think their talent is very much lacking in that in that department. So yeah, give me the Rams minus four and a half. Uh, give me the 49ers, give me the 49ers minus two and a half. This is a game I wouldn't touch otherwise, but the Seahawks are kind of spiraling and their defense is struggling. And this 49ers offense really took the Packers to the limit on Monday. And I think the Packers are a better team than the Seahawks. So by process of elimination, I think the 49ers can probably win against the Seahawks. And I'll give them, you know, two and a half points. That margin of victory isn't that bad. I know they they won, they lost by barely two points on this uh, this past game, but I think the Seahawks, especially with losing to teams who are really good at running the ball, which the 49ers are really good at, even if they have like no real name, big name running backs, they still have Trey Sermon and he, uh, Elijah Mitchell, I think, still. <coughs> Jermaine Clayson might be back, so I think the 49ers will be able to run on the Seahawks like the Titans and like the Vikings did. So I think the the 49ers minus two and a half is a good bet here, but I, I don't think I would take it. Give me Denver plus one against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are going to be, you know, kind of relieved. They won this. They won that last game, and I think the offensive line for the Ravens has kind of been struggling. They let up two big sacks in that crucial last drive for the Ravens, and this Denver pass rush is really good right now. Uh, Denver won't make many mistakes. They're going to play a solid game, score anywhere from 17 to 20 points on this Ravens defense, which has kind of been struggling, especially they let up 17 points to the uh, Lions last week, whose offense is woefully less talented than the Broncos. It's, just kinda, it's like they're two opposites of the spectrum, most talented to least talented, uh, offensive weapons and offensive line based. And I think that they're going to make no mistakes, and their defense is going to swarm Lamar Jackson and make him cause him to make mistakes. So, in this plus one minus one pick them, give me the Denver Broncos. Uh, and this one might surprise some people. Give me the Steelers plus seven against the Packers. The Steelers always play down to bad competition. 
They played down to the Bengals because they were historically are better than them. They played down to the Raiders because they're because histo- the Raiders are historically a bad team. They played up to the Bills. I think that the Steelers getting plus seven, they're gonna cover this. They may they may even win this game. I'm not sure, but the Packers, I think with their off the line, which is kind of you know slapped together right now, with that Steelers pass rush just hopefully comes back to you know the way they've been. And even even if they don't win, I think it'll be closer than most people think. So I think the plus seven is one of my lock bets of the week. Uh, and I don't, they may not win, but I definitely they'll definitely keep it within seven because they just they just they're a good coach team. They coach up and they play up to good competition. So this is going to be this is a too big a point spread for me to not take it. Brady revenge game. It's going to be the question of who is going to know each other better. Is Belichick going to be able to design a play? Um, design a scheme to limit Tom Brady who he knows so well or is Tom Brady going to know everything Belichick has up his sleeves and be able to work around that I'm inclined to believe the former I'm sorry I'm inclined to believe the latter I think Brady 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 is going to know what Belichick can cook up and stuff like that he knows his new offense he knows his new offense is very talented and the Patriots defense is struggling right now, and the team as a whole is struggling. And that Bucks defense, even though they haven't been playing all that well, uh, I think they'll have a good tune-up here against the Patriots offense, which is struggling uh, to make really big plays and things like that. And the lack of cornerback depth in the Bucks is really going to not be affected this much, especially with linebackers covering the tight ends and things like that, where that's where the Patriots have their best offensive playmakers. So I'm going to take the point. I'm going to take the. Uh, the favorite here, Bucks minus six and a half. I think Brady's just gonna go out there and really show who won the divorce in this game. If he hasn't already shown with the Super Bowl ring. And final game, it's gonna be Vegas Chargers with three and a half points. The Chargers are the favorite. I'm gonna take the Chargers. I think that the Chargers are coming off this big win against the Chiefs, and the Raiders have played, like I said, circumstantial football. That's why they're three now. Chargers are two and one. Only, the only reason why they lost because they beat themselves and they allowed a team to beat themselves last week in the Chiefs. So I think the Chargers come out and they don't beat themselves again. They should be able to win this game and they should be able to cover this three and a half point spread. Uh, they're just a more talented team, in my opinion, and they're more they're probably the more well coached team. They just need to minimize the mistakes. Most penalized team in the NFL and allow the Raiders to make mistakes that they are not. So. Those are my picks. We'll have to go back, maybe like middle of the season, we'll go back and retro- uh, retroactively give myself a, a record, or maybe I'll do it after this episode, and then so then when we, uh, I'll tweet out my thing, I'll tweet it out, and then we'll be able to check and go along with it this weekend. So uh, with that, this is the end of this episode of the weekly roundup with the weekly huddle. Uh-huh. Uh, we're gonna be making the Discord for the fans. I don't know if it's gonna be out by this time this episode's out, but. Hopefully, it'll be out by the time the draft episode's out. So, keep a lookout for that. It'll be in the description of the YouTube videos when it does come out. Other than that, thank you for 100 subscribers. Go check out our other social medias, Instagrams, Twitter. Uh, I think we might have one other one. I don't know. I think it's Instagram and Twitter. Uh, other than that, check us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those places. And uh, we'll see you at the next one, which will be later this week with the draft episode. Mock draft season, baby.